With the debate still raging over TT120 and whether it is the optimal scale or not, I wanted to get some first-hand experience of both N-Gage and TT120 itself. With my TT120 pre-order not going to land until the new year, I'm going to start the process with a review of Cato's Class 800 Azuma offering and compare it to the same model from Hornby in double O gauge that I reviewed earlier this year. As a double O gauge modeler, how will I find my first N gauge experience? It's time to take a closer look. Hi, thanks for joining today's review for what is going to be my first ever experience of an N-Gage model. We'll follow the exact same process as for any of my double O gauge reviews so that we can do an apples for apples comparison with the Hornby double O gauge Azuma at the end. We'll kick off with an unboxing and follow that up with the usual close up views, including a comparison view with the Hornby double O gauge model. After that, we'll get into the running session, which will be a tabletop running session, as I don't have an end gauge layout to run this on. We'll then get into the usual summary, scoring and final recommendation. As part of the scoring, we'll look at a comparison with the Hornby double O gauge version. We have a lot to get through, so let's get into it. Okay, so we're going to do the unboxing for this uh, Kato Class 800 Azuma in N scale. So it comes in this gauge master box. I purchased the full train set version of this uh, as I don't have an N scale layout to actually run the train pack on. So I need a track and I needed a controller. So that's what I've got in this box. This is kind of the all in one set. So if you're first time out buying something, uh, buying an N scale product, this is probably not a bad place to start because you're getting, um, it, it is a full set with a controller and track as we'll see. So it's, um, uh, Gage Master, kind of um, the representative in the UK for Cato, and so they've got put this uh, together. So let me just take this out now. It comes in this very nice, um, very handy kind of carrier box. Uh, so we'll take that apart. And really, when you take the f the front cover off, uh, you get the big giveaway as to where the origins of this particular set are, uh, as in Japan. Uh, not a bad place to get a set from. Uh, I think Japan would have a good manufacturing quality uh, kind of view. So I think that's a, that's not a bad place to start. So we'll take it out of the box. And uh, this is my first experience of an N scale set. And um, make a nice cover on the top there. So we'll take that out. So as you can see, we've got our track, we've got our controller. Uh, it comes with a, quite a generous uh, oval of track. Uh, for the scale, so we'll kind of see that it comes uh, already on on with this kind of underlay uh, that clips together, and that should make it a little bit easier to put it together. As you can see, the track uh, uh, couplers are um, quite small. Everything is is small here, obviously, from from a scale perspective. So these are quite good. Um, I had those before on a a wolf scale set, which was the um, the Irish Railway, which is the last set, which was a very high quality set as well. So a good experience of that form. Uh, so there's straight track here. I think this is probably the straight track from the train pack because when you get the train pack, you do get enough track on the train pack to actually uh, mount uh, the model if you just want to put it up as a display model, uh, which is actually a nice feature. I, I do like that. And uh, and then you get the, the full oval in this box, as you can see. So this, it's a reasonably sized oval. Um, now let's look at the other pieces. Uh, we've got the controller here and um, got Kato on it and it's got an interesting kind of control panel so forward reverse and off and we've got this and a little reset button so nice looking uh, controller and there's our input there and our controlled our power for the track okay and we've got a DC power block here and uh, that plugs in and we've got a plug end of that and we've got a, a plug socket here to go into that. Now, interestingly, they seem to give you uh, this adapter. So it obviously did come originally with, a, say, a European plug, and you could adapt it for the UK. But uh, Gage Master have thrown in the box a uh, proper UK uh, cable there, so that's fine. We don't need to do anything with that. Um, this looks kind of interesting. Um, 
it's like a giant uh, cotton bud. Um, I assume this is for cleaning the track or something like that. Um, just from the, the spacing there would probably fit in with that, but really strange. It looks like uh, something from uh, Japanese cuisine or something that you might be eating with. So we'll, um, we'll take a look now at the actual train pack, which is stored in a little compartment underneath this, uh, this box. And uh, so now we're seeing something a little bit more here, which is good. So this does come in the, the green Great Western Railway livery as well as this uh, Zuma livery, which, which is great. So we've got a little bit of a starter thing here that just tells us how to put everything together, I suppose. Uh, which we'll do and it's it's kind of generic because it's got a steam locomotive in there now um, but they've obviously put, uh, adapted it for the uh, class 800 so we'll take a look at, at that when we're putting it together so that's that um, now the next pieces of documentation look to be all in Japanese so they're probably not going to do us a lot of good uh, just take a quick look at these um, Again, okay, it's all Japanese. So it's talking about various peripherals, track e extension units, etc. Um, and again, this is all in Japanese, talking about the track. Uh, so yeah, that's not going to tell us a lot. And here we get an English version. Okay, so this tells us uh, kind of what we've got here in the starter set. And I think we've got, um, this is the M1, Master 1 set. So I guess this is what we're going to be building uh, in our oval. So I'm going to build this out on the kitchen table, literally, because uh, I don't have a layout for end scale. So we'll kind of put it together the way probably a lot of people would do when they get it first. Okay, so let's get that out of the way. And um, I'll just leave that over to one side. And here we get to the, I guess, uh, let's get the track out of the way as well. So we can give us a bit, a bit of space here to look at these. So let's get to the business end of this, uh, which is the train pack itself and the actual model. And it comes in this nice little case, so very compact. Um, if you're used to trying to the, the sort of space that, that your OO gauge models take up, um, it's going to be significantly reduced when you move, move scale. Um, so here we've got, wow, the front car. Now it's light, so it's not a power car. The power, one of the middle cars is actually the power car. Um, but it is really, really nice looking. Um, the livery is applied very well. We'll do the normal close-ups on this and we'll get the macro lens out to do that. Um, and we can see a little switch there, which I think is for the lights just in there. Everything here is small. It's, everything is tiny. The wheels are tiny. Wow. That's my first N-gauge, as I say. I, don't, I haven't had experience with N-gauge before. A little coupler at the back there. Um, we've got our pantograph, I can get my hand around it to lift it up, it is posable, I think, yeah, there we go, yeah, it's posable, it's fine, so, um, uh, the nice roof, you've got the little fans in there as well, fan detail, nice glazing and nice internal detail in the model. Now, these models don't come with coach lighting as default, so unlike the Hornby OO gauge version, which has lighting which comes on whether you're under DC or DCC, you can't control it, it just comes on, um, it's always on. Um, this doesn't have any lighting in the, in the cab area at all, but you can add it, this kit's to actually add it. Uh, now, it does have directional lighting, so when we put it on the track, we should see the directional lighting. But as I say, this looks really nice, it, it's, it's a very nice little rendition. Um, We'll, we'll need to get up close with this, with the, with the, the macro lens, as I say, to get a little bit, look at it in more detail. But all I can say in the hand here, it's got a good quality feel to it. It is really small. I mean, it just, my goodness, those little small wheels on that bogey. Wow. Um, that's my first experience, as I say. So we'll put him there. Uh, I think the next guy here is going to be the power car. And we'll take him out. And he's got a little bit of weight in him, so this is our, it's, we'll say, is our power car. And yeah, you've got all, you can see the contacts there, and you can see the gearing on the bogey, uh, so on both bogies. Uh, so this has got a nice motor in it, um, with two flywheels. So it's a 
should it should give some good performance and it, it's it comes pretty highly rated i think a lot of people rate this particular set very highly i don't think a lot of people rate kato's products pretty highly so um i guess we're going to experience that uh, in the next little while so that looks good they they do look good i mean the livery application the quality of the build obviously you don't have a lot of kind of small separately fitted parts because this is just too small to have that so most things are are uh, molded and uh, they may be the roof pieces there are separately fitted but there's there's, there's no really tiny intricate pieces of detail because it just wouldn't work at this scale um but the quality of the finish the labeling and the detail on the body um all looks really good um now that livery finish looks easily as good as the livery finish on the uh, the hornby o gauge model and again it will i will actually be quite interested to look at the finish because this looks like a kind of a shinier finish which i, I do prefer and it's more it's more keeping with the prototype these these uh, the uh, real life trains come with shiny vinyl overlays is kind of what they use so um having a very matte finish on them isn't very prototypical um so this does look to have that kind of shine on it and it does look good it doesn't look cheap it doesn't look toy like it just looks good so um okay so that's it that this this is a nice little train pack and this is what you'd get if you just bought it as a train pack if you already have a engage uh, layout that's what you'd be purchasing and you get the five cars you get a bit of track and you get a bit of uh, there's a buffer here included and there's a railer at the bottom here so for putting these guys on the track so i'm sure i'm going to need that a nice smooth feel there actually the, those wheels actually feel very smooth on that so that's uh, a nice running action to them okay so um this looks like a really nice set it's really good quality it, it is small <laughs> that's all i can say it's, it's my first end scale so it is small i, I need to get used to that um, but it looks really nice uh, it's nice detail the track looks really good controller and everything looks good it looks like a good quality set for just over 200 pounds 212 pounds i paid for this new that's not bad that's around the same price as the tt120 starter sets uh, are around that 200 pound price mark and i guess this one question would be what is better value um i'll kind of know i suppose once i test the uh, the tt120 set i have pre-ordered in the new year and i'll certainly revisit it at that point in time but just on first looking this is not a bad value set from what i can see and I will do a value assessment at the end and give it a score and it'll be a value assessment from a end scale perspective because to be fair to it I'm not going to compare it to um, it, it wouldn't be fair to compare it to uh, the O gauge which which is larger and would be more expensive so uh, when I when I do the assessment on this I'll do it for its scale but so far so good I think I'm kind of keen to get this track together actually and take a look at it and we'll do the normal close-ups uh, as well so let's let's go on to the next part of the review so far so good looks really good okay so let's get into the close-up view and we'll start with the normal side-on view that we have here and i guess uh, i am using a macro lens here so i've got pretty close to the model so hopefully you're going to see a lot of the detail like the first thing is the livery finish is excellent and it's in a glossy finish as well which i really like uh, I think the main constraint on detail is just uh, the physical dimensionality of the model. Uh, in general, they've done an excellent job in rendering this particular model uh, right across both the uh, up, upside of the model. And you can see even in the passenger area, there's some very nice uh, decor in the seating area. The livery is excellent and a great nice level of underbody detail, bogey detail. Those wheels are really small, as you saw when you're doing the unboxing. So this is kind of showing them magnified quite a bit. And you've got the uh, the pantograph uh, detail there as well, and it is a posable pantograph. And you've got the, the car number there, which is important when you're actually putting the set together. And we'll uh, take a, a 360 view of this now, uh, just to kind of get that sort of a look. And again, we've got the front and rear cars here. And you can see the, uh, again, uh, the, the nice rendering of the livery. 
Uh, you've got the nice roof detail. I mean, they've really gone out of the way to replicate the roof as closely as possible, uh, including the fans there. It's all very small, obviously. Again, the, the very nice frontage on these particular models. I, I do think they've done a very good job there with the wipers, the, the lighting. And uh, when we see this side by side with its larger stable mate, it, it is a very presentable representation uh, given the challenges of rendering it in this particular scale. And I was pleasantly surprised, I have to say, with this particular model and uh, how well turned out it actually is. And I guess it's it's one of the state-of-the-art models from an N-Gage perspective at this point in time. So, you know, it is representative of the, the best in N-Gage. So here we are putting it side by side and you can see the physically different size here. It's massively different. It sounds like this, the gauge is only half, you know, it's half the scale, but it actually is only a quarter of the size. So, you know, it, it's significantly smaller and as we saw, significantly lighter as well. And, and yet it does an excellent job of, of rendering the model as, uh, as much as it can do. There's some of the, the gangway detail there at the end that, that you don't have on the, the N-Gage model, which really isn't practical, and some of the underbody detail is missing. But overall, it, it is a very good rendition, and I would argue that the paint job is actually superior to the, the more matte finish paint that we, uh, paintwork we have on the, the Hornby model, which doesn't quite show up here, but it will show up on the still photos later. So it is, it is a very good rendition for a, an N-Gage model. It, is, it really is an excellent rendition of this particular uh, locomotive uh, or this particular train. And uh, I think, to be fair, Cato have done an excellent job. Uh, so here's the, we've got, we've got the close-ups. Uh, that's the Hornby version there on the left. And that's the prototype on the right. And you can see the, it's a typical vinyl type finish, which is a, a shiny kind of glossy finish uh, that you have on most modern trains, to be honest, these days. And yet Hornby have this kind of matte finish. You see the, the black roof area there, the, the areas around the window where it really shows up. Uh, and it's also right across the whole body, uh, the whole white of the body and the, the, the yellow on the nose cone as well. So it's all a kind of a matte finish, unfortunately. And uh, that is, uh, differs from what we're getting now on this particular N-Gage model, which does go with the glossier paint finish. Uh, you can see it there, particularly on the, the, the roof and around the window, it stands out. And uh, the red there at the front, you can you can see the, the nice glossy finish there, the reflections in it. And that's represented right across the entire body. So that is actually closer to the, the real life prototype uh, actually than the, the Hornby model. So for what it is, it's a very good rendition. It does have limitations because just this physical limitations that can't be overcome. And there's only so much detail you can fit in on a small model, but overall a very good rendition. Now getting into the running session. So we're gonna do a quick uh, run through the assembly here so you kind of get a view of me putting the the tabletop uh, circuit together and it's very easy to do the track while it's small and could have been a little bit fiddly if you were just dealing with just track on its own but because it comes in this nice uh, framework with the underlay it snaps in very easily and uh, very easy to put together and here we're doing a, a little bit of a run in on the power car uh, they don't really call this out uh, I just chose to do it. Uh, I, it to be honest it runs really smoothly out of the box so whether you need to do it or not, I also think it's a good idea, to be honest, to run it in both directions for a bit of time. Now we've got the full train running here. Uh, we're starting off at the kind of lower speeds. Interestingly, on the controller, you need to have it at about minimum 25% or so for the train to move. I don't know if it's a limitation of the controller or the, the model itself. So that's the only real comment. Uh, if you had this under DCC, it might be different. And I've only got it under DC here. Now we're cranking up the speed a little bit and it, it is super smooth. I mean, it just, it's a really smooth model. Uh, there's no doubt about that. The, the cars, when you're actually putting them onto the track, uh, they're extremely free running. So they're a very low uh, level of resistance uh, for the motor. So this particular train is, is, is ultra smooth and, you know, I'd hazard to say that that particular motor could probably easily pull much more significantly longer trains with this quality of car that's on, on this particular train. Uh, we're racking it up now, we're about 80% uh, I think at this point. See, it, it does get louder, you can see the, the louder noise from the, from the locomotive and we'll crank it all the way up now in a minute. And it does get up to a prototypical speed of 161, or scale speed I should say, of 161 miles per hour. That's not prototypical of course, that's too fast. But it does show that uh, this model can live up to uh, the full speed that uh, is required uh, and would be representative of the real life model. So 
Uh, it's probably good running at around 60-70% uh, power is what I found, and that's probably where most people r will run it. The track radius here is, is on the wider side, uh, so that's if you're running on a narrower, and obviously this does go down to a, a, a kind of a radius 282 as they call it for N-gauge. Uh, so, you know, there's a minimum radius you need to run this on and that, that's fine. And you can see the little railer there, that's a kind of a, a kind of a crossing. You, use, you can set that up as a level crossing and it's also a very handy railer when you're putting the, the cars on the track. So, very good from a running uh, perspective. Okay, so now we're going to get into the uh, summary uh, view. And we've been looking at the train set is the GM. 2104 uh, that's the gauge master part number uh, for the full train set and the train pack is a Cato part number K10 1674 and that's uh, for this class 800 in the uh, LNER Azuma livery as I mentioned there is a GWR class 800 also available in the same configurations uh, from gauge master and Cato so you can uh, see that on the gauge master site actually website if you go there and you'll also see it on a lot of the, the main vendors like Hattons and Kernow for example will stock this. This is an N gauge model of course, one is to 148, so just to, to clarify that in case uh, people think it's something else. It does come with a five pole motor, all wheel pickup, it's got dual flywheels and it's got dual bogey drive so you know very good uh, running characteristics and I guess that's represented when we saw it in the running session. A minimum radius 282 curves, uh, which is a kind of a, an N-gauge term. It is DCC ready, uh, though not in a fully standard form. It does require multiple decoders to cover the motor, to cover the lighting, uh, sound. And if you want to put DCC control for the coach lighting, you'd have to put a decoder in each of the cars. So it's a little bit messy from a DCC perspective. And um, and obviously a little bit fiddly as well from a, fi a fitting of DCC perspective. So people may be happier keeping this as, as DC only. Extra features, it does have directional lighting, as you'll have seen in the running session. But the coach lighting is a feature that you have to purchase an upgrade for. And that is readily available. It's easy to fit, but it's just, I suppose, if you're not used to having to purchase that for coach lighting, it's just a little bit of an added cost and a uh, piece of work to be done. It does have a posable pantograph in both the front and rear cars. Unboxed weight is an extremely light 79 grams for the power car, and that compares to 500 grams for the double O gauge Hornby model. Again, giving you ideas that the, the relative size and mass of these is, is, is hugely different. Not just two to one, you would just think of it as two to one because that's what the scale difference is, but it, it's more, a lot more than that. Uh, and then the other cars are 39 uh, to 40 grams. A again, extremely light. When you lift up the double O gauge equivalent to this, uh, it just it seems so much bigger and heavier after you've been working with the N gauge model for some time. It's, it's uh, quite a difference when you switch between scales. Uh, top scale speed, as I mentioned, is 161 miles per hour, and that's for the five car set at 100% power under DC. Retail selling price for the full set it's a 259.95 RRP, but you will pick it up for around the 20, 220 mark, um, and then 218 is the lowest price I've seen for it. And the train pack is, is obviously cheaper. You'll pick that up for maybe around, again, 178, 180 type mark. Uh, so that's the sort of current pricing. So the overall scoring, uh, I'm giving it a 9 out of 10 on the running performance. Now it is DC only, so I haven't didn't have the opportunity to test this under DCC, so there may be differences there if I was to test it under DCC. The main item, I suppose, which I mentioned in the running session, was I needed to have at least a minimum of 25% on the power controller to get this thing to move. Now that could be an issue with the power controller in terms of its voltage threshold, or, or maybe it's, not, it's, it's the motor itself. Uh, I don't actually know. And I found this on the, the double O gauge model as well from Hornby, which is why it didn't get a 10. It got a 9 out of 10 as well. It didn't get a 10 out of 10. So while they're very smooth, uh, you don't have a linearity so that if you apply 20% power, you get 20% speed. It's not even close to that. And the speed is skewed to the upper end. So you're going relatively slowly until you go over 50% power. And then you get this much more drastic increases in speed as you go over 50% power. So it's not linear. Um, so that's my main complaint and I had that complaint for the double O gauge model as well. Um, now the reason it's a complaint is because I've tested other models and they're extremely linear and your 20% will give you 20% of what the scale uh, maximum speed is. Uh, so it's, it's, um, it's a justifiable criticism, I'll put it that way. So if people are upset that I'm only giving it 9 out of 10, 
well, that's that's what I gave to the Hornby one for similar reasons. So uh, it's an apples for apples. Uh, appearance and detail, 8 out of 10. It was never going to be a 10 out of 10. And remember, I'm using this. I, I'm own, My experience or my, my field of experience is double O gauge models. So that's what I'm measuring this against. Uh, this is not a, a comparison against other N gauge models, for which I think this set would probably score higher. So I'll just make that point now. So I'm saying this is a, an 8 out of 10. Uh, it is missing aspects of detail that are on the Hornby model, but it does have what I think is a better livery finish. So I would give it, I'm giving it that. So, you know, overall, it's not a bad uh, score at all, I think, from a, a, an overall appearance perspective. Extras and variance is a 6 out of 10. It is missing the coach lighting, and there are those challenges in terms of DCC is not as straightforward as is, as it is on the on the larger model. But it's still a very nice set, and if you get the set, you get the very nice track uh, with the underlay, and uh, this does have the posable pantograph. It does have directional lighting as well, uh, so it, it is falling a little bit short in a few areas. And I'm, so six out of ten, you know, I, I think it was always going to probably suffer in this area again due to the nature of L of N scale. Build quality and packaging, I'm giving a 9 out of 10. I actually think it's very good, and um, and it's actually better than the Hornby model from the, from this perspective. Now, the Hornby model did have an issue with uh, light bleed. From what I've seen, I don't believe this uh, this model has the same problem. And now, that could be quite... If you think about it, this is so much smaller than the Hornby model, that that, that would be more of a challenge. But I guess you don't get to see that anyway because you don't get it in the standard set. Uh, but the overall build quality, and hopefully you've seen this, is really good. Of the, of the whole set, the track fits together really well. No loose pieces in the box. This whole package, my whole experience with this particular model was seamless. I had this all set up and running in no time. It, between doing this review and getting the model running and everything, I had absolutely no problems at all. And that's what you want for a starter set in particular. You don't want to be fiddling with things. So I found this whole experience with this particular model was excellent. I didn't have one hiccup in the course of the review. I think overall, I you know, it's it's a 9 out of 10. The, the reason I didn't give it a full 10 out of 10 here, because there's a lot of that Japanese documentation in the box. And the instructions, they kind of go between the two. So I think there's just a little bit missing there. It would be nice if there was more English. You don't need all the Japanese stuff. I understand where it comes from and all that. And I understand there's probably limitations in getting the stuff translated and localized and all that. That's the reason this is not a 10 out of 10. Okay, so just to make that clear. The next one is the price value. It's a 10 out of 10, and that's whether it's the train pack or the set. Set is even better value, obviously, because you're getting you're getting the power controller, you're getting a very generous amount of top quality track with the built-in underlay, which makes it very easy to fit together, and you know, which makes it a really, really nice set. So at point in time where I purchased this, it was £212 from Hattons, which is really good when you think about it, uh, to get a five-car set like this. Now, it is so physically smaller, so there's much less material in it. And things like the actual transport costs, etc., should be significantly less. So I get all of that. Uh, but uh, and, and obviously, you're going to get more shots from it from your tool from a plastics perspective. So these models need to be cheaper than uh, their double O gauge brethren. And in general, they're not, actually. They're not far. They're, they're, there's a rough equivalency in price in general. But for this particular model, whether you're comparing it with double O gauge or whether you're comparing it with N gauge, which is what I did here. This was the one item where I compared it against the N scale pricing. Uh, it is still a 10 out of 10. So it's a really top class, high value set. So, you know, 10 out of 10 is good by any standards. And this is, I, you know, I can't flaw it from a value perspective. So weighted, uh, and the weighting for people who aren't familiar with my reviews is I do weight the running performance and the appearance in detail over some of the others. And there's a, there's a weighting between one to two uh, across the various items, which means if you try to calculate this and do an average, you won't get what I get. Overall weighted score is an 8.6 out of 10. I think that's a very good score. Hence, a very, you know, a very good set from that perspective. So let's compare it to uh, the Hornby. So I kind of mentioned already that the running performance I've rated as a 9 out of 10 for both. And both of them, the reason it's not 10 is because of that linearity issue. They're both good runners, put it that way. Appearance and detail, there's more detail on the Hornby, but the livery isn't as good. Now, there's a fuzziness on the Hornby livery as well, which you'll have seen on some of the close-ups. close, close -ups. So overall, it's, it's a wash, but there are there is more detail on the Hornby model, as you would expect uh, on, on a double O-gauge model. Uh, but I'm saying the livery application isn't as good as this particular one. So it's uh, coming out as, as pretty equal there. Uh, the Hornby does have extra. It has a coach lighting that's in all the coaches, comes on automatically. It's on DC and DCC. Uh, so you can't control it. So if you do get DCC, you, can, you can't actually turn it on or off. It does have a bit more capability than the Cato one does in terms of uh, of that. 
uh, build quality and packaging. Uh, I hit the horn beyond this one for a few things. I didn't like the pantograph, which is a very weak pantograph, to be honest. No, that's not saying the one, the pantograph on the, the Kato is, is very strong. That is a very small model, and to be prototypical, it did have to be necessarily quite a fine uh, pantograph, and it, it is posable, it's fine, but it is quite thin plastic. I just didn't like the plastic on the uh, Hornby model for what it is. It should have been a metal pantograph, in my opinion, for a model of this quality and cost. And also, they had the, a significant light bleed issue on the Hornby model, which was just atrocious to see that on a model, again, of this cost and quality, and particularly that Hornby already had an issue last year on another model with light bleed. So when I did my scoring of this at the start of this year, I was not happy to see that in this particular model. The price value, I gave a 6 out of 10 to the Hornby in its day, and that was only on the discounted price. I gave it a 2 out of 10 on its recommended retail price. So it's losing out badly versus the Cato model on, on price. But if you do get it discounted, I know some people have been able to get it at an even better discount level. Kerno have had the Cornu model now at a, at a significant discount. So if you can get it at that price, you're probably getting it, uh, it's probably closer to a 7 or 8 than a 6. But 6 is the typical discounted price. And I'm and the same I'm applying to the Cato model. It's the typical discounted price. So overall, the Cato model is, is a better value model. You know, this is, again, using mainly criteria from double O gauge. I'd say if you were measuring it against other N-gauge models, it would probably score higher. And obviously there was a few issues with the Hornby model, a few issues on the quality side, there was a few issues on the pricing side that are dragging down the Hornby model, which otherwise was a good model. And as you can see, the appearance and the, the running performance scores are pretty good on it. I do like the Class 800 from Hornby. I think it, it, is, a, it is a good model, but it does have short, shortcomings. And Hornby haven't improved the model in the last four years. They increased the price, of course, but they didn't improve the model in those four years. And for some relatively modest changes, they could have done some good improvements to the model uh, without adding any significant cost to the model. And that's what disappoints me. I have to admit to being extremely impressed with this Cato model and also with the overall package from Gage Master that includes a very generous oval of track and an excellent DC power controller, all at a very attractive price. So how does it fare as a starter set? Well, I'll put it this way. If I had found this under the Christmas tree as a young modeler, I would have been blown away. The track system in the set makes it very easy to assemble and disassemble. The power controller is fun to use, and the model itself is a superb performer as it snakes its way around the generous oval of track provided. With the small footprint, there is endless potential for building an interesting layout, even in a modest amount of space, and this is where N-Gage excels over its larger cousins. Appearance-wise, I'm really pleased that Kato have gone with the more prototypical paint finish than the Hornby Azuma, and this is a well-renditioned model, albeit constrained in some areas by its reduced dimensions. The two areas where it falls short over its double O-gauge equivalent is the support of coach lighting as an add-on and the more complex and non-standard DCC configuration. N-gauge won't be for everyone, so you have a fundamental decision to make if purchasing this as a starter set. Hornby haven't yet indicated when and if they would be delivering the Class 800 for TT120, though I would assume it's going to be sometime in the next seven year horizon that Simon mentioned in the last video. If you are big into modern image modeling, or the person you are purchasing this for is, then Engage will more likely have the models you might be interested in right now, before equivalents appear in TT120 over the coming years. As a standalone model review, the Gage Master Kato Class 800 in the LNER Azuma livery comes highly recommended, either as a full train set or as a train pack. I would see its fellow stablemate in the Great Western Railway green livery as being an equally excellent model. I can't think of a better introduction to N-Gage than one of these models. So that brings me to an end of my adventure into the world of N-Gage, for now at least. To be fair, I had a pretty good idea of what I was getting into with this particular set, and it didn't disappoint me. It will be interesting now to see how TT120 fares relative to this. Unfortunately, the Easterner set I had on pre-order won't be landing until the new year, but I will be reviewing it as soon as it is available, and I will compare it scale-wise to both double O gauge and N gauge based on my recent experience. So is N gauge an option for me? I've asked myself this question many times over the years, and ultimately has come down to the availability of specific models that has kept me away from it. 
I can see its massive benefits from a space perspective and the possibility that opens up in terms of achieving a relatively complex layout in a modest amount of space. I know some people have gone down the two layout route to achieve the best of both worlds, but for now I want to put my efforts into my double O gauge layout and doing anything of significance in another scale is going to have to be something down the road. If you are starting out in the modeling world and see the models you are interested in in this scale, then it should warrant serious consideration and investing in a starter set like this one might be a good way of determining if N-Gage is for you or not. So thanks for watching today. I have a couple of other reviews lined up before the AcuraScale Class 92 eventually arrives in December, and I'll hopefully see you on those. Please like, share and subscribe if you found this video of interest. And until the next one, take care and happy modeling.